Thank you, Mr. Chair and to Ranking Member Wyden for having this hearing. And good afternoon, Mr. Secretary. Thank you for being here. Before turning to my questions, I just wanted to comment on Treasury's mission to stop terrorist financing. Detecting and disrupting terrorist financing is a critical tool in the counterterrorism arsenal. And in order to help prevent ISIS, Al Qaeda, or the next version of these groups, whatever they may be, from threatening our homeland, we have to provide robust funding for the anti-terrorist financing programs at the Treasury Department. To that end, I am very pleased that Treasury's budget requests a significant increase for the Office of Terrorism and Financial Intelligence, and I look forward to supporting Treasury in this mission. So thank you all for doing that. Th thank you, and thank you for the specific funding increases we've had in the last few years in recognition of the importance of it. Well, thank you. Now I want to move on to some pieces of the budget. I am sure, Mr. Secretary, we can agree that supporting innovative small businesses is key to growing the economy and creating good-paying jobs. In my state, the New Hampshire Community Loan Fund, a nonprofit community development financial institution in Concord, has been increasing access to capital for Granite Staters, especially small businesses in economically distressed areas of our state, for more than 35 years. In fact, they came by my office yesterday. But the President's budget would eliminate the Treasury Department's Community Development Financial Institution Program, which provides support to uh, CDFI in New Hampshire. Meanwhile, Mr. Secretary, the administration told the American people that the new pass-through deduction in the 2017 tax law would give a boost to Main Street entrepreneurs. But in fact, the Joint Committee on Taxation found that in 2018, the top 1% received over $20 billion in tax cuts from this new deduction. Now, after billions in tax cuts that were supposed to help small businesses have actually gone to the top 1%, the administration wants to slash the vital CDFI program. Mr. Secretary, can you tell me in dollar terms how much the President's budget would cut from the Treasury Department's CDFI program? Uh, it, it, would take, it would take it down from 250 to approximately 14. And well, that, that's, that's the CDFI fund, yes. not the program. The program, I believe, is currently funded at about $160 million. Uh, I don't have that chart with us, but we'd be happy to follow up with you. It's um, a very important program within your own department. So let me just tell you that it's at, funded at about $160 million, and your budget completely eliminates it, 100% cut. So with the $20 billion that the pass-through deduction handed to the top 1% last year, With the, I, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, it's, it's, sorry, did you want to say something? No, I was just going to say we're, we're happy to follow up. But let, me, let me just acknowledge that I, I do think the CDFI program does create valid benefits to the community. There were difficult decisions we made in the budget, and we'd be well, happy to well, and, and, and let's just talk about what that reflects about the administration's priorities then, okay? Because with the $20 billion that the pass-through deduction handed to the top 1% last year, isn't it true that the CDFI program could be fully funded more than a hundred times over? Well, I, I don't. I don't agree with you. And the calculation is rather complicated on the twenty billion dollars because what we did is we lowered the corporate tax rate. The idea of the pass-through discount was to create some level of parity between pass-throughs and corporations. I, that, I do there's, understand. There's, there's, I, there's an assumption in that calculation as to. What, what goes to the taxpayers and what gets passed on. But well, let, let's, let's just be very clear, though. That's about a half of the value of the total pass-through uh, uh, deduction. And it went to the top 1% at a time when the administration is turning around and talking here in this hearing about tough choices to make. The tough choices are going to be for small businesses in economically distressed areas that can't get necessary capital to invest and create jobs just where we need them the most. 
That reflects this administration priorities, and I just have to tell you, I think that's backwards. I think we should be focused on where we need to help people sm start small businesses, create jobs in the most economically depressed areas of our country. And certainly in my state, that elimination of CDFI is going to have a real impact. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator Casey.